John Davison Rockefeller Sr. was born on July 8, 1839 in Richford, New York. His father was not a good provider and often abandoned his family. As a boy, John earned money by raising turkeys and selling potatoes and candy. John showed great skill in bookkeeping and business. At his first job as an assistant bookkeeper, he earned 50 cents a day. Early in his business career, he became involved in the oil refinery business and earned more money each year. John continued to work in the oil business at a time when an oil-fueled economy was beginning to take off. He continued good business practices and eventually came to own Standard Oil Company, which became the largest oil refinery in the world. The success of Standard Oil forced most other oil refineries out of business, for which he was criticized and even taken to court. At one point, Rockefeller's personal wealth was $900 million. But as wealthy as John D. Rockefeller was, he was also very generous. He was a philanthropist. A philanthropist is someone who helps others by giving generous donations. A religious man all his life, John gave great amounts of money to the arts, colleges, and medical science. His donations helped public health and medical training and research. His generosity helped to eliminate hookworm and yellow fever. John was married to Laura and they had five children. Many of his children and grandchildren have continued the legacy of his philanthropy and some have served in government positions. Uh, you mentioned before that oligopolies would not exist in a free market. Can you elaborate on this and how do you explain Rockefeller having 90% of the oil market at one point during the Gilded Age? And then there's another question here. Ayn Rand did not admire Rockefeller as she said herself. I don't remember that. So he's just zero sum to her in spite of all his achievement from hero to zero, really. I don't remember Ayn Rand saying that she did not admire Rockefeller. So, I mean, I certainly admire Rockefeller. Um, and I don't believe Rockefeller had a, what you're, what you're calling an oligopoly, although technically what Rockefeller had Technically, based on, I think, silly economics, he had a monopoly because 90% would define a monopoly. But I don't believe that is a monopoly. So I don't believe you define a monopoly based on the market share that you have. I think monopolies and uh, monopolies and oligopolies are, are, are defined based on whether they have government protection or not. As long as they don't have government protection, there's always competition. Always competition. So... For example, we learn in economic textbooks that if you have a 90% share of a market, then you're a monopolist. And therefore, what you do is you raise prices on lower quality because you have no competition. So what the hell? You, you, you raise prices above uh, you know, your marginal cost. You, you raise them as high as you can so that you, up to the point where you don't lose enough customers. So you, you're maximizing your profit in that way. And Rockefeller didn't do that. And, and you can go back and look at the evidence. There's plenty of evidence, and I, I highly, highly recommend. There's an essay that Alex Epstein wrote on Rockefeller. Just put Alex Epstein and John D. Rockefeller into uh, Google search, and you'll find it. But also, I would recommend uh, The Myth of the Robber Barons. The Myth of the Robber Barons, which is a, a book um, by Robert... I'm not sure if it's Robert. It's Folsom, by Folsom, who... Uh, that, you know, describes what happened. And if you look at the numbers, Rockefeller decreased prices every single year and increased quality every single year while he had 90 plus percent of the oil refining capacity in the United States. So he was, they tell us, a monopolist. It didn't behave like a monopolist. In my view, he was a monopolist. He was in competition. It's just the competition was unseen because the competition was the potential. The potential of somebody to outmaneuver him to, to, to lower prices below his, to create a product better than his. And that was in, eight, in the 1870s. And at the time in the 1870s, he was producing oil primarily, primarily Burton Folsom, Burton Folsom, B-U-R-T-O-N Folsom, F-O-L-S-O-M. -S that is, I, I recommend all his books. Uh, Myth of the Robber Baron, is the is is the, the best but they're all excellent everything you wrote is worth reading if you're interested in economic history anyway 
Why did he do it? Because he knew there was competition. And who competed him out of what he was producing? Well, if you look at the 1870s and Rockefeller is producing this, this oil, he's refining oil, and he's refining oil into what? Into kerosene. And what's the kerosene being used for? Lighting. And who competed him out of the business of lighting? Thomas Edison. Electricity. Now, what bureaucrat, what judge in a court, what jury in a court would have predicted that? He knew it. So he had to be on his toes. He had to keep fighting. He had to keep innovating. Every, I mean, he was one of the most innovative entrepreneurs in all of human history. He should be massively admired. Now, maybe there's some reason not to admire him that has to do with his personal life. I don't know. But as a businessman, he's one of the true greats. One of the true greats. Didn't take government subsidies. Didn't take government, didn't, was not involved in trying to, you know, in cronyism. Now, how can we have obligations which we didn't undertake? See, the parents of a child would have obligations for him up to a certain age, since they brought, brought him into the world, but they can't do what is impossible to them. So it doesn't mean that, that they can at any moment throw the burden on the rest of us. We're society, everybody's society, and we can't have unearned obligations and unchosen obligations. What in the Ayn Rand civil context would be appropriate societal measures to accommodate the ungifted? Their own parents and a chance to give their parents to earn money. If, however, their parents are poor and cannot assume it, it's a big, heavy burden, then you can appeal to private charity as it was always done before welfare statism in this country. You want private charity as well for the gifted? Uh, if necessary, they usually in a free society. Standard Oil Co. Inc. was an American oil producing, transporting, refining, and marketing company. Established in 1870 by John D. Rockefeller and Henry Flagler as a corporation in Ohio, it was the largest oil refinery in the world of its time. Its history as one of the world's first and largest multinational corporations ended in 1911, when the United States Supreme Court, in a landmark case, ruled that Standard Oil was an illegal monopoly. John died in 1937 at age 97. His wealth at the time of his death was estimated at $1.4 billion, which makes him one of the wealthiest people in recent history.